Hello, welcome. Hi there, this is Patty Bennett. I'm very excited to show you these adorable new stamps and how I colored them with Stampin' Blends markers from Stampin' Up. So welcome. If you are joining live, then you should be seeing this on Friday, November 3rd at 11 a.m. Pacific Time. And if you're watching a replay, I would encourage you to jump ahead just a couple of minutes because we are going to give everybody about a minute to find the live stream before we start our stamping or information about this cute little set. But as you're joining in, I'm just going to go ahead and mount my um, dies on my um, magnet card because I haven't had a chance to do that. So I just thought, well, that will just be a quick little thing I could work on while everybody's joining live. And I would love for you to say hello if you are joining the Facebook Live. Hey, I see Randy and Shan and Linda, Mary, Peggy, um, Sheila. Hello in Kentucky. Sheila, hello. How are you all today? I'm just so happy that you've joined in. Sorry I didn't have this done before, but I only die cut one bear as I was doing these cards, and so I hadn't even taken these off my Stampin' Up! packaging yet. I don't know about you, but I really much prefer my dies on the magnet cards. I get these from Stampin' Storage, and I really love them. You've seen me use them for years. They're fabulous, and I just prefer that my dies be accessible this way. So that's why I use them. And we'll get going in just a minute. I'm just using my time here to get my dies ready. And I'll tell you all about this fun new bundle. It's so cute. Fluffiest Friends is brand new from Stampin' Up. Demonstrators have been able to pre-order this, but it is um, going to be available to customers as part of the online exclusive release starting November 7th. So you may have seen this on my um, my blog. It may have seen it on um well, social media, I think I've posted this information because I've been talking about the beautiful meandering meadow paper that is part of this uh, release. Oh, thank you, Christine. She said, congratulations on my Stampin' Up! achievements. That is so sweet of you. Thank you. Yes, Patty, love this cute set. Hi, Robin. Good morning, Lisa, Janet, Christine. Oh, I missed a whole bunch of people. Hello to everyone who joined in. Thank you for joining. Hey, happy Friday, Tammy. So, um, yeah, on November 7th, Stampin' Up! will release, there's a couple of bundles. So today we're talking about Fluffiest Friends. I haven't used this much yet. It's on my desk right here. I have it right here to use. I just um, haven't had a chance to use it yet. But you have seen me use the Meandering Meadow paper, which is part of this suite collection. Of course, you can buy the item separately. You don't have to get the whole suite. But if you have been astute, shall we say, observant, you will have noticed this graphic that Stampin' Up! released several weeks ago, and it gives you a little clue on some other things to come. Look how cute this is. I can't wait to use this cute soda pop can and set. I mean, look, it even has this little pull tab. So if you die cut that with a foil type paper, doesn't that just look adorable? Can't wait to use that. I love these big new greetings. So that's upcoming. And then there's a little sneak of something back here. So there are more things coming on November 7th. And I think it's going to be fun to see everything that's released. And if you missed this was a couple weeks ago. I did some cards with the meandering meadow paper. So this is a six by six size and I was showing different ways to kind of get the maximum out of your six by six paper. 
and these this paper will be available starting November 7th and I don't know if if it's going to go the route of the autumn paper that has sold out multiple times but my advice on any of these online exclusives is to get what you want really quickly don't wait if at all possible i mean i know people have you know budgets and and that kind of thing but Honestly, these new products are all while supplies last. And if there's something that you just love, I wouldn't wait to get it because you all know about that autumn paper and how frustrating that's been. So this is a bundle that we're talking about today. Fluffiest friends. So cute. Look at all these cute critters. And I'll tell you kind of a funny story about this image when we get to talking about the coloring. But I have used this adorable bear. On this card isn't he just so cute well he or she I don't know I kind of think of them as Pooh Bear with the honey and I'll tell you my oopsie about this yeah like brain confusion but we'll get there and then I used this bunny on this card isn't it so cute I think it's adorable I think it turned out really fun and then I colored the other images because as you know, I love to swatch my colors and write down the colors of Stampin' Blends that I used so that I remember them. And if I want to do a blog post or share with you, do a video, or just remember in the future, I like to keep all of my colors um, handy if I want to reproduce that color. So... Anyway, let's get going here. Welcome. <laughs> this is Patty Bennett. I blog at pattystamps.com and I love to share my stamped creations with you. If you would like to jump over there tomorrow, you're going to get all the info and the pictures of these cards that you might want to pin to Pinterest. And as you know, the this set, like I've been saying, won't be available until next week on the 7th. So that's Tuesday, only a few more days to wait. But you can get all the Stampin' Blends. And I actually have linked to those today on pattystamps.com. So when we're done here, if you want to um, jump over to my blog to see the link to Stampin' Blends, you can do that. Oh, Esther is asking, do I keep my swatches? So generally, what I do with all my swatches is when I'm working on a project, I swatch the colors that I think I'm going to use, and I label them, and they kind of serve as color inspiration or color combination inspiration. So I keep all these at my stamping desk. I've got all these handy. For And see, there's been lots, right? Lots. <laughs> I do this for all the projects that I'm working on. But for this particular project, I wanted to play with the actual image and the colors. Now, I may come back to these and die cut these and use these on a project. But for right now, I am using uh, or I am keeping them like this so that I can talk to you about the colors I used and so that I can duplicate them. I've got, hang on, I've got other images stamped so that I'm ready to go. Memento ink on the white cardstock, the basic white cardstock. So I've got those ready to go and I can duplicate these if I want to. Um, so anyway, Esther, to answer your question, I might tuck this inside my stamp set for a bit, or I might die cut these and use them. I'm undecided, but generally, this is how I keep all my swatches, and I love to keep them handy right here at my desk so that I can look at colors and see what looks good together or see what I might want to use reuse again in a project. Let me see if there were other questions. Could I make a 3D project like an ornament? Um, Diana, do you mean out of these? I mean, I'm sure you could. 
Um, I don't plan to, but I'm sure you could. Welcome, Juanita. So glad that you caught the live. Peggy also. Hi, Mary. Oh, thanks. Allie loves the bear. <laughs> Good. All right. So we are going to talk about coloring these images to kind of make them look a little bit lifelike, a little bit like fur. And this is something that I wanted to try out. And so I thought, what a perfect set to try. So let's just talk about how I did that. We can, I actually wanted to maybe try this kitty out with some grays, but I think we'll start with duplicating this so that I can show you how I colored and then we'll just talk about the other images. When you are stamping and coloring with an outline image and stamp and blends, I recommend Memento Black Ink and our basic white cardstock. I don't use anything else, nothing fancy, nothing else. And I like to, um, like I said, swatch my colors. So that's important to me. So let's just grab the crumb cake and number 300 and let's look at that as a starting point. I think, let's see, I had these set out for, yeah, crumb cake. And I had them set out for each project, so I kind of had them ready to go. But if you want to just color your image like dark around the outside and light on the inside so it gives it a little shadow, you can totally do that. But what I was really trying to do was trying to get it to look a little bit more like fur. And so I colored with little strokes instead of coloring in like you might normally do. I started with my lightest, which was light crumb cake. And I'm just doing like these little strokes. And these are going to just kind of start to blend because it's a very light color and that's okay. But I, thought I'm going to just do this from start to finish with these little strokes instead of what I mean is normally you would just sort of color in an image like that and then it would be very solid. So I'm trying to make it look like little bits of fur. Oh, thank you, Tammy. She says, great tip. Oh, Diana says, no, just looking for ideas for the holiday. Okay, so I'm. this is not a holiday um, um, set necessarily, and it's not really for ornaments and whatnot, but there are other ideas out there for that, Diane. Uh, do the blends work on watercolor paper? I would not use them on watercolor paper. It soaks this up too much. You really want this ink to sort of sit on the surface of the paper. And the alcohol uh, dries very quickly. It's really not meant for watercolor paper. So I just recommend basic white. And I know this is going to look kind of almost more like a porcupine to start with. And you're you might be thinking, this looks really a little bit odd. And in a way, it kind of does. See, we've just got these little, little brush strokes happening here. But I'll show you how it's going to smooth out. Let me put this one right here. How it's going to smooth out and give a little bit of a texture and a fur. And I'm pausing a little bit because when you color with Stampin' Blends, you really want your layers to dry in between if you are trying to achieve this sort of a textured look. If I just keep adding color and keep adding color right away, right away, it's all going to blend into nothing. And that's not what I want. I really want this these layers to sit on top of each other and build on top of each other. So while I'm trying to um, 
pause for time to give this time to dry, I'll just show you a close up here of the bear. And you can see that out of all these colors up here, these six colors, number 100, 200, copper clay, 600 and 700, you can see how they built on top of each other because I waited in between every color to add the next color. And you can see kind of these little brush strokes that are kind, I'm trying to mimic the fur is what I'm doing. So we've done the light and dark um, crumb cake. And now I'm going to go to the number 300. And if you're wondering, let me show you this. In the catalog, there is a separate page from all of the color collections, and it lists these natural tones. So this is the dark, 100 and 200 is dark, medium dark, medium, medium light, and light. And that's how they're sold. But they are um, labeled with the number. So, for instance, this is number 300 right here. So this is in the medium dark. They are not labeled with medium dark or dark or medium light. So a little bit confusing, but once you see this, then you kind of get the idea of how they are labeled and sold. Okay, so this then is that number 300. I'm going to do my little strokes a little closer to the outside, not coming in too close. A little darkness in the inside of the ears. Okay, so you we have three colors on there now. You can see I've left some light on the face, some light on the paws, and some light in the middle of the body. Hope you can see that. Maybe I should have pulled the camera down, but hopefully you can get that idea. Let that sit a little bit, right? I'm letting it sit between each layer of color because I don't want them to just all blend into each other. Oh, yes, so Michelle is mentioning the class that I have been taking from Barry and Jay at Mitosu Crafts. They teach um, Stampin' Blends coloring lessons. They do a lesson every month, plus some additional bonus classes. And I've been taking their classes for several months, and I've really enjoyed learning techniques from them. This is sort of one of them. I mean, I'm of course, taking a little bit of liberty here because we're doing little furry animals, whereas when we did the hay chuck, uh, these right here, I've got it right here. We did this set in one of the classes, and to make the feathers look a little more realistic, they were sort of doing this technique. Now, I don't claim to be anywhere near as good as Jay is doing this, but it's it's just a, a technique. It's just something that I tried and I adapted from what I learned from them and really enjoyed doing this. Trying this, I should say. Trying. <laughs> We're all learning, right? <laughs> oh, thank you, everybody. I'm so glad that you're enjoying this. So glad. So I'm going to go back here to light crumb cake and I am going to fill in just a little bit bringing it a little bit closer into the middle of the face and a little bit on the paws here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this over to my left hand and I'm going to use the color lifter. There are a few things you can do with the color lifter, such as what it's called, and that's lift color. Like if I didn't like how dark that got, I could scribble on there and it would lighten it. But here's another thing you can do with the color lifter. You can pick up color from another blend and you can use it as like one shade lighter. And you can swirl on that color to kind of fill in a little bit. I didn't want this to be stark white, but I also didn't want to be as dark as 
if I colored with that. So I didn't want it that dark, but I didn't want it white. So this gives you that in between. So that's one thing I did with these animals. And then if I want to come grab a little bit darker, this is the light crumb. Oh, wait. Sorry, that was light crumb cake. I don't know if I said that. Sorry. This is dark crumb cake. So now I'm going to grab a little bit of dark crumb cake with the lifter and just use it to sort of blend a little bit. Okay, so this is starting to kind of lift and blend and make the colors be a little bit um, textured. It gives texture. That's what it does. It's really cool. Really cool to play with that. All right, let's just use this marker then. This is the dark crumb cake to do a few more little shadows add a little bit of additional color and I'm going to use our darker of our colors here the number 300 to go back in to the outside or the perimeter of the body Just building up the lights and the darks. I'm going to let that sit. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just sort of go over with our light crumb cake to fill in to, do you see how it just has that light crumb cake, uh, kind of a fill in, almost a fill in, not totally. I don't want it like totally colored like that. So we'll finish that up, but let's just add some color here to his paws or his feet, I guess. I guess those are feet, right? A little bit to the ears. I'm going to fill in a little here on his nose. Is that his muzzle? I don't know. I guess that's what, I don't know what it's called. I don't, I don't know cat anatomy. Somebody with a cat help me out. <laughs> cat anatomy. Oh yeah, so that was the funny story I was going to tell you. When I was coloring all of these examples, um, let's see, I think I did the bear first, and then I stamped, I thought this was a cat, okay? So I colored it gray, and then I did the bird, and then I did the bunny, and then I did the beaver, and then I got to this one, and I said, oh, that's the cat? Well, okay, I think that's a hamster, <laughs> So really, I think that little guy should have been brown. And I really wanted to do the kitty in gray. So I am going to do this kitty in gray because I wanted to give it, um, I wanted to have a gray one. <laughs> but I was like, oh dear, I obviously do not know my animals very well. <laughs> oh well, oh well. <laughs> uh, a muzzle. Okay, thank you, Robin. <laughs> yep, thank you. Lisa said, don't forget his feet. Um, yeah, I'm glad you like that tip, Vicki, with the color lifter. It's kind of like, do you remember these blender pens that we used to use a lot? It's the same kind of thing where you can lift up color on something that you've done with your regular stamp and write markers, or you can dip this into an ink pad or onto the tip of a stamp and write marker. So it's the same idea as a blender pen, but you don't want to mix and match. This is all alcohol. You don't want to mix and match that um, blender pen with alcohol inks. Okay, so now I'm just going to do a little bit more of the light crumb cake, just kind of fill in here. And then my final step is going to be one last time with 
the, the lifter, the color lifter, and just sort of come in here and swirl and just do a little bit of blending so that you don't see quite as many of the little strokes. But I wanted to give it some additional texture. I think I'll do a little more up here on his face. Let's fill that in just a little. His or her, I don't know. Maybe it's a her. And every one of these will always turn out different because uh, I don't know about you, but I can never color anything exactly the same two times. And let's do copper clay on the pot because, you know, clay pot, right? Here's light copper clay and dark copper clay. Oh, and I do want to show you a really cool technique that I tried. I don't know, did it, I might have missed the comment, but I'm wondering if anybody um, saw something that I did on the bear card. I'm just adding number 600. It goes really well with copper clay here. And let's do a red flower. So I think I'll do sorbet, sweet sorbet. And a little bit of green for the leaf. Very cute. Very cute. Let's see, was there any? Yes, the colors lighten as they dry. Yes. So it has started to lighten and blend, and it's, they're pretty close. I think I filled in maybe a little bit more on the face over here and um, blended a little more here, which I might do. I might just add a little bit of blending out this color here just a little bit with just sort of these little bits of brush strokes to kind of keep that fur idea going. And just a little tiny bit up here, just so his, his face isn't totally white. And I have learned that sometimes you need to just step away because I don't know about you, but I could color things to death and that's not a great idea. So we're going to leave it at that. And that's kind of how you get this look with trying to make it look like fur. I did have one additional thing I wanted to show you, though. I was thinking later, after I did these, and I haven't tried this yet, about adding some actual additional fur strokes with our stamp and Write markers. So rather than having it blend, I thought maybe... This would actually like stay on the surface and give those additional little strokes of fur. So I'm going to try early espresso. And I just thought, well, what would it look like if I kind of mimicked what the artist did? And I don't really want it to look like a porcupine, but I just wanted to give some extra little strokes there and that works that that would work to actually darken those areas maybe even a little bit darker on the nose and a little bit more in the ear and since this is water based this is not going to soak in and blend like the adding an additional layer of the alcohol so if I just want to darken up any little areas, I can do that with my Stampin' Write marker. Well, that's kind of fun. Okay, so we know that works. So there's an additional idea for you. So let me grab 
this card and ask if you saw something fun that I did on here that I wanted to show you. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Kathy says her granddaughter's watching, Nora, and Nora says hello. Hi, Nora. Hey, Wendy in the UK. Uh, let's see whether I didn't see any other questions. Okay, so we're we're good on that. Um, I hope everything is good with the video because this poor iPad, it really needs replacing and it's stuck. So, yeah, I can see your comments, but I can't see what I'm doing over there. So hopefully you can see it. Anyway, did you see the circle? I wanted to show you this. This is something that I've been seeing kind of all over Pinterest and uh, sorry, Instagram on Instagram. And people were doing these circles and they were uh, filling in with color and actually making them into ornaments. Can you see that? How the color is sort of bleeding into the inside. And this has nothing to do with this set. I just wanted to try this. And so I wanted to show you how to do that because this I think is something that you could do on any project that you were using a circle. And I've actually used the decal circle die cut. I die cut it after I did this circle. And this is really easy. I want to show you this. So I rated my kitchen for different sizes of cups. <laughs> yes, I used a cup. And I grabbed an ink pad. Let's see, I think I'll do shaded spruce. And I, oh here, I'll show you. Okay, I dabbed my my drinking cup on my ink pad. See, I've got the green, can you see that? Okay, and just press down on your paper. And this is just regular basic white paper. I imagine this would be kind of cool on watercolor paper. Okay, so I have a circle. And then over here, I have a cup of water and I have a large paintbrush, so just get that wet. Get some of the water off there. I don't want it too, too soaking wet. And actually, this does not have very much ink on it, so I don't know if this is gonna work. Oh, it works, okay. And I'm touching the circle so that it pulls the ink into the middle. And I'll hold it up and show you. I hope you can see that. Do you see how it's like bleeding the color into the middle? And if you wanted it even darker, you could definitely um, make a little puddle of ink and dip your paintbrush in it so that you're actually painting color, not just bleeding the color. And that's how I did this circle. So I hope you can see that, that the green sort of pulls in to the towards the center a little bit. It's kind of like um, if you uh, used a blending brush and ink, but it's controlled within the circle. And I, I don't know, I just thought it was something different and cool. And then I used those decal circles to die cut. And I used that as the focal point to put my bear on. <laughs> I don't know, what do you think? Is that kind of a cool technique? Something kind of different and fun. Try different colors. Try different cups and whatnot and see what you think. Thanks, Anita. Yes, definitely, Wendy. I will put those in the dishwasher before putting them back. <laughs> so <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about these finished cards. I just have to tell you my oopsie. So, okay, I don't know about you, but I feel like Stampin' Up! has so much happening. So many new catalogs, so many new kits, so many new products, online exclusives, demonstrator events, demonstrator only, pre-order, um, customer order. Like there's all these different things happening in my head. And in my brain, I saw the bear and the honey and these bees, 
and I thought, oh, this paper is coming out with this online exclusive. Okay, that's what I thought in my brain. It's not true. This paper and the cute bee stamp and the bee punch is going to be in the January 2024 catalog. Demonstrators who registered for the online um, on stage at home next Saturday, November 11th, were able to pre order this. <laughs> but in my little brain, in my confused little Stampin' Up world, I was thinking, oh, cute, I'll use it with the bear because the honey and the bee and the bear. And that's why I cut out these cute little honey jars. But yeah. That's not the case. So, and then to confuse things even further, I used the greeting from Sweet Citrus. Enjoy the sweeter things in life with the honey. Okay, so I've really got a mishmash of things happening here. And I apologize if that might have sounded confusing, but you'll be able to get the fluffiest friends bear and the bunny and the kitty and the beaver and all these cute little things starting November 7th, but you won't be able to get this cute paper until January when the new catalog comes out. So I'm sorry about that. Yes, Juanita says overwhelming. Yeah, um, I know. And that's true. <laughs> Juanita says I haven't even used Christmas sets yet. I know. I have a box of Christmas stuff that I need to use that hasn't even been inked yet. So, <laughs> right? Does it feel like that? <laughs> But I just wanted to show you this because I know you like to see the new things and you like to decide if you want to order early or, you know, get things right away. And like I said before, if there's something you see on these online exclusives and you want to get it and you don't want it to be sold out, then you need to get it soon. So that's why I'm showing you Fluffiest Friends a little bit early. So this one uh, the bunny I decided to pair with this paper, which is available now. It's also an online exclusive, and it is called Delightful Floral. So this is something available right now. It was kind of just a bonus. Was there six, I think, new papers that they released in um, October, I guess. It's like, I don't know, what month are we in? Where am I? What day is it? Where do I live? <laughs> so that is available right now. And I decided to pair the bunny with that. I know we're in fall and I know this is like a spring card, but sometimes we just work ahead and we just make things that make us smile and we don't always have to make something fall in November or something Christmas to get ready. We can do other things, right? So there's the cute bunny just stamped onto a deckled circle, layered onto another deckled circle, and then I did a deckled circle inside. And that stamp is from the other new set that's going to be released as part of the November 7th online exclusive Garden Meadow. So it's that right there. And Hello is also from this set. So if I haven't confused you enough... <laughs> Maybe you need to watch the replay, or if you're confused, maybe you need to watch the replay. But if you have questions about all of these new products, about this fun coloring method, let me know. Now is the time to ask, and I will uh, do my best to answer your questions. <laughs> Thank you. Allie loves the bear and the honey paper together. Very cute. Yes, Vicki, of course. You can use anything else to go with the bear. I just saw this paper sitting over here, and I was like, oh, fabulous. I'm going to use it. Mm, yeah, okay. Wendy, I saw that as well. Somebody made this bear into a panda. I'm telling you, my brain is not that creative or artistic to picture how to do that, but I would love to copy it. Yeah, that was so cute. <laughs> Oh, item number for fluffiest friends. Thank you. Let's look at the flyer. So fluffiest friends is a bundle. You can either get the set or the set and the dies or the dies separately. The bundle is 162850 
or just the set is 162846 and then the dies are 162849 and I do have that on my blog today um, as well as a link to where you can shop for Stampin' Blends markers. You are welcome, Randy. Thank you, Jennifer. She loves the coloring of the animals. Oh, thank you, Wendy. I hope that these combinations help. And tomorrow, so that will be November 4th, pattystamps.com, you will be able to uh, see all of these. I've got them all photographed all on my blog for tomorrow. And you can either pin them on Pinterest or print them or save them or however you like to uh, make sure that you remember a project or the information. You are welcome, everyone. Thank you for hanging out and watching today. I'm so glad that you were here. I hope that you are inspired and learned maybe a little technique to uh, another way to color animals, to make it look a little bit furry or textured or, um, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Esther. I so appreciate it. And I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And I hope that you get some coloring time in because I don't know about you, but it's like my favorite thing to do. <laughs> favorite, favorite. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. I will see you next week. Bye-bye.